Hi guys, this is Michael Balchitis. In this video, I'm going to show you what recopology is and how to do it within ZBrush. So what is retopology? Now you'll see what these two 3D models that I have here. And if you go to NB on your keyboard, I'm in Cinema 4D just for this um, explanation of what retopology is, but I'll get over into ZBrush in just a minute. So I have the lines on within Cinema 4D, and I wanna show you the difference here in the lines. Obviously you can see how this is much denser, and it's sort of like in a grid pattern, and it doesn't flow the way that you would normally want it to flow within your topology, within your 3D model. So when you're modeling, a lot of times in ZBrush or other 3D packages, you'll be sculpting, but you won't really care about too much about topology. Your only focus is, is on form and shape and getting the, the model or whatever you're trying to do, a character, a hard surface model, and you're just trying to get the form down and the shape. And if you kind of, if I rotate around this model a little bit, you can kind of see how this grid is. And it's it makes no difference in how this uh, model is is modeled. It's just simply about form. Now, if we look on to this model on this side, on the left hand side, and I'm going to zoom in a bit, you can see how this uh, the the polygons, how the faces are, and how they wrap around each of the say the eyes, the nose, and the mouth area. And you can kind of even see if you move in a little bit, you can see the little parts underneath the nose. And we can kind of zoom around this model and you can see how everything f has this, what's called edge flow. And it just flows nicely around the model. And uh, if I go to my uh, polygon mode and I'm gonna go to UL on the keyboard and what I'm gonna do is this is gonna be my loop selection tool. And you can see as I go around this model a little bit, around the eye, you can see how these loops go. And if I go around the mouth, and just being able to highlight this a little bit better, we'll be able to kind of see what I'm talking about in terms of how this the edge flow is. So you can see the mouth area and even around this even a little bit more here. So you can't do that with this model. There's no easy edge flow. And uh, say if I'm in, um, in, edge, in the edge mode and I go to my move tool and I just double click, I get this loop that goes around the entire edge. And you can do the same thing with the mouth. So all this means is it just gives you a more logical amount, a logical way of how the mouth moves. Say if you're going to be doing any type of um, blend shapes or uh, in Cinema 4D, it's called pose morph. So you can change the expression of your character and have it frozen in that state so you can animate that. Um, you can't do that with this model on this side. And if I select this, my wrong topology, and if I go to my polygon mode again and I go to UL, you can see it just gives me a loop around the model or right across. There isn't any edge flow. There isn't any logical edge flow. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, doing this within ZBrush. Now, um, before I uh, move to ZBrush, and I'm going to show you if I go to the model layout. And this, is, this isn't this is something specific, specifically with just Cinema 4D. Any type of 3D, 3D package that you'll have, you'll have a retopology tool that will allow you to manually build these faces out on top of your high-res model. So if I'm using, say, um, Project Results, and I make sure I'm not on the model itself, you can then make these loops 
and I just kind of messed up a little bit, but you can make these loops to this model and then just kind of build out these, these loops that would then go around your model and it would attach to the high res model. And you would just do one half. You wouldn't have to do the whole thing. You would just do one half of the model. But it's, and you know, it's tedious. And, and in some cases you may prefer to do that, um, you know, within Maya or Cinema 4D or whatever. And you'll be able to get the exact loops and the way that you want it. But we'll go over to ZBrush and we'll take a look at the tools that we have over in ZBrush. Okay, I'm over here in ZBrush and I have my model loaded into this scene. And you can see that we have this kind of grid display for its lines. Um, now, if you go to over here to your right, you can look at the uh, polyframe and you can also type in Shift F in order to bring up your lines. So you can see how we have this set up. Now, if we want to retopologize retopologize within ZBrush, what you would have to do is you would have to go to Geometry and we'll come down here where it says Z Remesher. Okay, so we have a bunch of different settings here. Uh, you can see where we have our ta uh, target polygon count and we have it to set to five. Now, this is in uh, uh, as in 1,000 polygons. So each number would be 1,000. So right now we have it set at 5,000 polygons. And we have our slider here that we can then adjust. And we have half same double adapt. And we also have adaptive size and curve strength. Um, now I'm gonna talk a little bit about keep creases and detect edges a little bit later, but for now, we're just going to see what happens if we just use the, the default settings as it is when we open up ZBrush. So let me click on Z Remesher. And you can see we have this little progress bar right at the top. And you can see how this is progressing. It might take a little bit longer or shorter depending on how complex your model is. And you can see here that we have our model and it doesn't really make sense because if I kind of just zoom in a little bit, it almost seems that it's not, um, it's not symmetrical. So in order to fix that, what you do is I'm gonna press uh, Command Z to undo. And if you have a symmetrical model and you wanna make sure that it's exactly the same on each side, what you would have to do is you would have to make sure that you have your um, your symmetry on. Now you can come up to transform and come down to active symmetry or you can just press X on your keyboard. Now you can see this other dot on the side of your, um, depending on what side of your model is on and that's how you know you have symmetry on. So let's do that again and we'll do Z Remesher with our symmetry on. Now you can see that this is uh, completely symmetrical. So we don't have to worry about um, any other settings in terms of its symmetry. So right away you can see that this is a much different model in terms of its, its layout and its flow. Now it's not exactly correct. It's not, not perfect. So let's see what we can do to adjust these settings that's within this little panel here. Now we can definitely adjust the size because if we're going to be um, taking this high poly uh, model and then bring it into another program we want to make sure it's kind of light and especially if you're going to be doing any type of game modeling you want to make sure your polygons are pretty low so you can adjust this model you can uh, adjust this setting here where if you just click on here in the number you can then type in a specific uh, number that you want to put in. So let's go half. We'll go 2.5 and enter. And uh, actually, I'm sorry, let me just undo this because what I want to do is I want to show you the difference between this mod this layout and then the one that we're going to have. So we're going to have at 2.5. Now we have adaptive size that we can then adjust 
a little bit. And then I'll adjust a little bit of the faces and how that's going to look on the model. And then we have curve strength. So if we want our model to more adhere to the curvature of our model, we would uh, make sure that this number is, a is higher. So move this slider to the right. Um, I'm sorry, I'm on adaptive. Make sure I'm on the right slider. Curve strength, so we'll bring this up. And then let's press Z Remesher and see what we get. So you can see that we have a little bit better of a layout and we have a little bit less faces. Maybe still a little too dense in here. You can kind of see that this is a bit denser. And also, we still don't really have the curvature that we want with our mouth, but it's much, much better than what we had before. If I move around the model, you can see how this is a lot more uh, logical in terms of its edge flow. And if I brought this in just as is into an, you know, my 3D package, Cinema 4D, you could do a loop and you can see how these loops would go around the model a little bit a little bit better than what we had before, much better in fact. So what I wanna do is I wanna try to get the curvatures that we had in when I showed you the retopology of our model in Cinema 4D. So I'm gonna do an undo. And what I'm gonna do is there is a tool that you can use in association with your Z remesher. So if I go to my brush, or you can also type B on your keyboard, and you can come down here where it says, uh, you can go to Z, and now bring up our Z remesher guide here. So let's click on this tool, and now let's do a, a curve around the eyes, and let's do one around the mouth as well. And I'm just doing this pretty quickly, but you can um, take a little bit more time in making sure that it's exactly the way you want it. Now, with just the settings that we had before, uh, we can do our Z remesher, and we can see what our result is. Okay, now we're getting exactly what we wanted before. Uh, when I showed you in Cinema Forda, we have these nice loops that go around the eyes and as well as the mouth. So this is a really useful useful tool when you can't really uh, turn the the, uh, the dials here and the sliders in order to get the um, the exact curvature that you want for your model. This tool, the Z Remesher Guide uh, guides, is really good tool for when you want to get these curves down perfectly. And so the, at this point, what you can then do is you can export your model. If you come up here to export and now save it as an OBJ. Um, if you have GoZ, you can use that uh, button. For some reason, it doesn't work with R20, Cinema 4D R20 just yet. Hopefully, I'm looking forward to that update. But then you can export that, bring that into your 3D package, do any type of facial expressions or whatever you want to do next. Um, so this is a really good tool. Even it's a very click, you know, just one click, and you can get this remesh to what you want, just as is, which is a really nice, um, nice feature. But then if you have even more control, you can come up to this brush and get that perfectly, exactly the way you want. I put a link in the description to download project files. You can download the project file from this course as well as all the videos that I've made so far at astronomicskills.com. Thank you.